Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the basics of a pivot table, which is a classic Excel tool that will help you save time and analyze large data sets. So first, you see I have a data set here, which is just the month of September and various expenses I had, um, the amount, as well as the categories such as gas, clothing, or food, and the payment method, cash, credit card, checking account, and we're going to use this for the example of our pivot table. And usually the best practice before creating a pivot table is to create a table of your data first. So we're going to highlight everything in this range here. And then we're going to go to the insert group and then click on table. And then yes, my table has headers. We can click OK. And now we have a clean table that is sortable and compact in one spot on this sheet. For our pivot table, I'm going to make a new tab and name it pivot table first before we create it. We could put it on the same tab, but I think it's easier to break it down a little bit further. Now to create a pivot table with this range, we don't have to highlight the whole range. All we have to do is select anywhere in this table because it is already formatted as one complete table. Then go back to the insert grouping again and select pivot table. Now the range will be table two, which is this table off to the left that we have. And we want this pivot table to be placed in an existing worksheet, which is the one we are working on, but we're going to put it in a different tab. So for the location, we can select this little up arrow here and then select where it will be dropped. We are going to click on the pivot table tab. And then if we select cell B2, that will be the upper left hand corner of the pivot table. Then we can hit enter and then OK. And now we have our pivot table in its own tab, but you see nothing is really showing up yet. That's because the pivot table doesn't know exactly what we are looking to accomplish yet. And we have to tell it in this pivot tables field section off to the right. Now you'll notice at the top we have date, expense, amount, and payment method, which if we go back to sheet one, date, expense, amount, and payment method, those are our column headings. Then if you look down below, there's filters, columns, rows, and values. For the basics of a pivot table, I'm going to show you rows and values. So let's say for example, back in sheet one, we have our data set and we wanna find out how much we spent in the month on each expense category. Now, the way you would do this without a pivot table is you would create a sum if equation for every single expense account and you would write equals sum if and if it is a gas expense, you'll total all of that. And then if it's a clothing expense, total all of that. A pivot table is a much easier way to do all of that. So let's go back to our pivot table fields. And for our rows, we want the expense, which is the type of expense. So to get the expense column into our rows section here, all we have to do is click and drag into the rows section and drop. And you'll see our pivot table start to form with all the different expense types we have in sheet one, all six of them. Then after that, we can do the same thing with the amount and drag it into the values field. And then we drop it and now you'll see all the different sum of amounts for each row label. I'll zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. So clothing, we spent a total of 47.34, entertainment 197.04, and so on and so forth. And we can also check that real quick just to make sure it worked out well. One quick way to check this is if we see the grand total here is 1849.22. If we go back to sheet one, and highlight all of the amounts and then look at the bottom right corner here you can see the sum 1849.22 so it looks like this worked out how we wanted it to if you wanted to you could go a step further and calculate all the different uh, expenses that were on the credit card versus everything on the checking account versus everything on cash but you would just do kind of the same method we did where you would swap out the expense for the payment method and you would get the same result and there's plenty of other customizations you can make as well. For example, the pivot table is assuming we want the sum of all these different expenses, where if you click on the drop down menu for sum of amount and select value field settings, you could change it to the count and 
if you hit OK, it's just going to tell you how many different transactions of that type occurred, but we'll undo that for now. Another thing, since this is a pivot table and not just random cells, you can't change the formatting of this table as you would normal cells. And if you do want to change the formatting, you would right click anywhere in the table and select number format. And then this dialog box would pop up where you could change the amount of decimal places, change if you want a dollar sign there or not. We don't, so we're going to leave it. But if you wanted to, that's how you would change it. And then one more thing, if we end up changing the data in our initial table, the pivot table itself won't update automatically like it's a formula. We'll have to refresh it. So let's go back to sheet one and let's, in the middle somewhere, add a new row. Let's say September 10th and we'll add a new expense type. We'll just call it miscellaneous. It could be whatever and we'll say $50 payment method we will say cash. So if we go back to our pivot table, we don't have the miscellaneous $50 expense here. What you have to do is right click and then just click refresh. And now you have the miscellaneous $50 amount. And that's it. That's a baseline overview of how pivot tables work. There's plenty of other things you can do with them as well. It can get more complex and that might come in a later video. But for the basics of what most people need, this is about it. And if that helped you out, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.